please slide on the plate springs on this side of the lateral sheet guide pieces from where the sheet should be pulled away. You can now change the direction of pulling with the operator tool. In this example, we are changing the direction of pulling to the drive side. The stock should be loosened and aligned to provide for optimal sheet travel. You can now pile the paper in the feeder. Then you turn the pile up to the first mark and disengage the crank handle. Now you turn the knob for the pile height counterclockwise to the lowest working height. Once you start the press, the pile transportation will also start automatically. The upper edge of the pile has to be adjusted according to the stock thickness. For thin stock, it has to be set to the lower mark, and for thick stock, it needs to be set to the thick mark on the scale. You will find more helpful hints in the operating manual or in our leaflet, Hints for the Feeder. For reliable separation of the sheets, the sheet separator fingers at the front edge of the sheet need to be adjusted to different stock. For thick stock, the separator fingers should not touch the front edge of the pile. And for thin stock, the separators should reach into the paper pile to provide for proper sheet separation. Move the lateral stops to the pile edge. Do not adjust them too tightly to prevent the paper from curling up. But do not move them too far away either because they should still touch the pile. The stop should slightly touch the pile with the spring. The pile frame holds the rear sheet stops and the rear edge blowers. The rear stop is set to the rear sheet edge by loosening the Tommy bar screw. Two blowers will loosen up the rear pile edge. The blowers can be moved and adjusted to the format size via the Tommy bar screws. At the operation panel, you now turn on the compressor for blast and suction air. Adjust the blast air via the control knob so the top sheet lies against the front sheet separator fingers. The lateral amount of blast air is adjusted via the right turning knob. The knob next to it controls the amount of rear blast air. By turning the lateral and rear knurled head screw, you adjust the blast air so that about 10 sheets are loosened up and lie on an air cushion. The lateral blowing direction can be controlled as well. The correct pile positioning has been set. Press the button for double sheet positioning run twice. The top sheet travels into the press and the sheet length is measured automatically. The press stops, and now the double sheet detector can be set. Depending on the stock thickness, the toggle switch has to be adjusted to thick or thin paper. Turn the control knob all the way to the left until the control lamp lights up. Then you turn the knob to the right until the light goes out. Add five graduation marks for paper tolerances. Press the button for double sheet positioning run twice again and the sheet will be transported to the delivery. With the crank handle, you can now set the rear sheet stop of the delivery to the format size. Please remember that the rear stop may have to be removed for small paper sizes.
You can turn the lateral sheet joggers on the drive side on and off. Please push the sheet jogger against the side frame until it hits the stop and pull the little spring. The guide pulleys are on the chain sprocket shaft and provide for trouble-free transportation of the printed sheets to the delivery. If possible, the guide pulleys should always be positioned in the image-free area of the sheet. They can be removed very easily. The groove in the shaft should point toward the delivery. Pull the spring clip and the guide pulleys can be easily removed from the press. The ink repellent foil on the pulleys should be replaced from time to time. Put the guide pulleys back in and swing back the spring clip. The opening time of the chain grippers has to be adapted to the printed stock to achieve safe sheet laydown in the delivery. The opening time is too early in this case, which would cause scratching of freshly printed sheets. Reset the opening time via the control knob. The gripper opening time depends on stock and production speed. The front sheet joggers can be turned off and on with the lower turning knob. There are two fans installed in the delivery to provide for optimal delivery of the printed sheets of all stocks. The fans can be set separately. It may be necessary to readjust the sheet arrival when processing very thin or thick stock. One sign for readjustment may be frequent press stops because of early or late arriving sheets. The time of sheet arrival is set via this turning knob. The paper run should be checked again after having finished all adjustments. On Printmaster QM46, you can process metal plates and polyester foils as well as paper-based printing foils with a thickness of 0.1 up to 0.2 millimeters or 0 0.004 up to 0 0.008 inches. Please note that automatic plate ejection only works for plates of 505 millimeters or 19 and 7 8 inches of length. For punching a plate, you have to set the lateral stops all the way to the sides. Move the plate to the front stop. Exact angles can be checked with the punch template. The plate is centered by the lateral stops. Hold the plate tight and push the lever down for punching. You can also use this punch for film and assembly foils. This punching system can be used for pre-press and press and ensures correct alignment of the image. It provides for easy and high quality workflow processes. The auto plate function activates automatic ejection and insertion of the printing plate. Ejection will be activated if there is still a plate on the plate cylinder. The position of the plate feed table defines the printing unit in which a plate will be changed. Move the feed table toward the delivery for changing the plate in printing unit 2. Now you just have to push the button for plate change twice quickly and the plate cylinder will move to the plate clamping position. Insert the plate into the clamping bar. Please make sure that the plate is exactly aligned at the front register pins. Now you push the auto plate button again twice and the plate will be inserted. Swing the feed table to the other side and put the plate for printing unit 2 in the register pins. 
this plate has to face down. Pressing the Auto Plate button will insert the plate in Printing Unit 2. You will find further information in our leaflet, Hints for Auto Plate, and in the Operating Manual. Changing polyester plates is done the same way. The surface of the polyester plate should still be wet for trouble-free plate ejection. After a press standstill, the plate should be pre-dampened by a special function 01. The plate can also be removed manually if an auto plate error occurs. Move the cylinder to the correct position to reach the rear plate edge. The rear plate clamping bar can be opened against the spring pressure with the operator tool. Hold on to the plate and move the cylinder backward to the front plate edge. If the small LED of the auto plate button flashes fast, the front clamping bar will open when pushing the button again and the plate can be removed. If you need to remove the plate from Printing Unit 2 manually, you have to remove the roller package first. As shown in our previous example, the plate can also be removed from Printing Unit 2. Please make sure that the ball end of the rollers faces the drive side. Before filling in the ink, you have to install the ink fountain side plates on the operator and the drive side. Lift up the ink fountain and put on the lock. The knurled head screws have to be tightened equally on both sides by hand. Now you can fill in the ink with a plastic ink slice. The ink can be spread in the ink fountain by moving the lever of the ink fountain roller. When choosing the ink sequence, it's essential that the lighter color is in printing unit 1 and the darker color in printing unit 2. This will reduce the possibility of ink migration to a minimum. The inks have to be exactly tuned into each other when printing via one common blanket. The ink in the first unit always has to have a higher tack. If that is not the case, it is always possible to add printing oil in printing unit 2 to reduce ink tack and viscosity to the required level. The added amount has to be measured very carefully. Do not use too much printing oil. If one of the inking units is not needed for a job, you should apply resin-free oil on the inking rollers in order to protect their surface. After having prepared both ink fountains, you can now prepare the dampening solution. The dampening solution additive depends on the type of printing plate. There is a scale on the dampening solution container which will help you make the correct mixture. On the container, you will find the manufacturer's information on the amount of dampening solution that has to be added to achieve a pH value of 4.8 up to 5.5. Now you can fill up the dampening solution container with tap water. Please check the pH 